All right, I want to give you a, an example of what a false teacher looks like. And um, just going across some of these videos, or some of these, I'm sorry, these uh, comments here. And I got these held for review comments. And um, I feel like this one, it says, fun fact, not all Caucasoids are white. Hindus, Arabs, and Middle Easterners are Caucasoid also, and they ain't white. It's about the school structure rather than skin color and tone. That's exactly right. That is interesting uh, because um, I mean, black people can have Caucasoid bone or skull structure, and then also white people can have the Negroid skull structure. Um, so the skin color, it varies uh, with each skull type. Anyways, good stuff right there. It's interesting to me. And by the way, responding to the title of your video, God never had intention not to save any animals because animals didn't sin in any way because the Bible itself has written in it. That God removed wisdom from animals so they could not be aware of what they would be doing when they did bad. So that's why he promised in the prophet Isaiah that no animal would do bad anymore. And of course, Paul said the animals were caught up into vanity due to the sin of men, not by themselves. So men are only guilty by the evil dids of animal, not animals. Yeah, so that when the animal does something evil then man is held accountable if it's his you know if it's his dog or donkey or what have you right not the animal itself is not held accountable so anyways uh, appreciate that comment there too that's interesting stuff yeah missing missing my good videos and i don't know how to make good videos but thanks man and okay, here we go. He researched all this. Talking about giants. All right, so. Let's take a look at this. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Oh, you know what? I don't think you can hear this. Let me let me switch this up real quick. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Good evening, everyone. I uh, just wanted to do a really quick follow-up video on who cut down the trees, because finally today, after months and months and months of trying to find these, I was able to get access to the Dead Sea Scrolls. So uh, I'm going to show that to you uh, really, really quick and uh, show you guys who cut down the trees. Check it out. Now, when I made part one of that video, the only scripture I had to go by was uh, Daniel 4, 9, which goes like this. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches. Shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field. And let it be wet with the dew of heaven. And let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Okay, here we have the scripture from the Dead Sea Scroll version. Okay. Now, in the Dead Sea text entitled, The Book of Giants, the Nephilim. So, this is where he goes off the rails right here. So, this is what a false teacher looks like. Right? So, I agree that these, these are tree stubs. There's no question about it. And I can't help but wonder if these aren't from before the flood, you know, especially like if you were to look at um, the Devil's Tower, 
I think it's in Wyoming. The devil's power is a is a tree stump. There's no question. Ron Hines about that. So, yeah, he's got this stuff right. Um, but then he, you know, he goes into the Dead Sea Scrolls. He veers off from the truth. Okay. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. And that's exactly what the Dead Sea Scrolls are, the fables. Okay, and you can see, if if you had any doubt, you see right here, it says the Nephilim sons of fallen angels. Okay, so that's just ridiculous fairy tale stuff. There's no truth to it at all, and it's not supported in the Bible whatsoever. Okay, but then when when he excuse me when he quotes from Daniel not uh, four nine, uh, you know if you don't know the Bible, well you're gonna fall for this stuff. I mean this is why you gotta read the Bible because these people will deceive you. All right, they got a nice smile on their face and they real good talkers, right? Speak real good, much better than me. But Daniel 4, verse 9, when it's talking about the tree, this is a dream. This is a dream that the king had. And Daniel interpreted the dream. So I wonder, I'll, what if, how about I do this? I'll just read it, and then I'll end it. <clears throat> okay, so I guess we'll start at verse 9. Why not? Uh, except I can't say that word. Oh, Belsasar, master of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in me, no, and no secret trouble thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Thus were the visions of mine head in my bed. I saw and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and the height thereof was great. The tree grew and was strong, and the height thereof reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof, and all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts and the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to the whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the beast, the basest, excuse me, the basest of men. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belzazar, declare the interpretation thereof, for as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation that thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. All right, so it's this word that I can't say, that's Daniel, okay. <laughs> um, that's his name for Daniel, okay. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was astonished for one hour, and his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said, Daniel, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Daniel answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation thereof to thine enemies. 
the tree that thou sawest, which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, the sight and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heaven had their habitation. It is thou, O king, thou art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. And whereas the king saw a watcher and an holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with the band of iron and brass and the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king. This is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as the oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy equities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. I think that's enough. Well, we could go on, but uh, the, the point is that this was a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, and then Daniel interpreted that dream. This is not uh, fully explained in this video here. And, uh, and then to go turn this into the fables the, of the the Book of the Dead, or whatever that is, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is all nonsense. There's no truth in this stuff whatsoever. If you want the truth, it's found in the Bible.